Welcome to Mind Pump. This is the world's top fitness and health information podcast. Now, we're doing a Q&A episode here. Here's where we answer questions asked by listeners like you. But the way we open the episode is by talking about current events. We talk about studies. We do some catch up with each other. Sometimes we mention our sponsors. So here's the breakdown of what happened in today's Mind Pump episode. We started by talking about the new characters in Marvel, the new superheroes from Marvel. Uh, they might have totally jumped the shark and lost their mind. They are powerful. Just Sal. wait Just wait till you listen to these new characters. You're not going to believe it. Yeah. Then we talked about new movie releases on Amazon. It looks like they are taking movies from the theaters and bring them to platforms so you could watch them at home, which Ooh, is kind of cool. Is this cool. going to be a new trend? Really, really cool. Then I talked about what's happening in India with their quarantine lockdown. Uh, they're getting crazy with trying to keep people home. Laying the smackdown. Then we talked about the riots in Wuhan, now that they've kind of opened the doors, letting people out. A lot of them are angry with the way they were treated by their government uh, during their quarantine. Uh, Adam brought up million-dollar bunkers. Uh, these are people who build bunkers underground and they're luxurious and extravagant. It's really crazy. Um, I talked about trade with China. We mentioned Magic Spoon. Uh, this is one of our sponsors and how uh, we worked out a deal with them where they'll be donating a box of high-protein, low-sugar kids' cereal. I say kids' cereal because it tastes like the kids' cereal when you were a kid, uh, to food banks during this period of time. Now, Magic Spoon is one of our sponsors. Look, if you like to consume cereal, you like cereal, like the kids' I flavored do, cereal. I do, Sal. I do. But you want no sugar and you like whey protein, try this out. It's high protein, no sugar cereal. It's got great macros and it tastes amazing. It's great if you want to have a treat. And I know you do because you're stuck at home right now and you're looking at those mm -hmm. Oreo cookies. Mm -hmm. Reach for the Magic Spoon instead. So here's how you get your discount through Mind Pump. Just go to magicspoon.com forward slash Mind Pump. You'll get an automatic discount applied. By the way, they have a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like their cereal, return it for a full refund. By the way, don't forget to use the code Mind Pump. Then we talked about uh, Adam's little boy, Maximus, who's eight months old now. So we got a little update there. He's growing. We talked about the fear uh, that is surrounding these times and how paranoid I'm personally getting. Oh, it's driving mm. everybody crazy. Uh, we talked about the inventor of the bulletproof vest. Um, and then we mentioned the positive business pivots that are happening in these unsure economic times. Then we got into answering the questions. The first question was, what are some of the best accessory lifts that help you increase your overhead press number? So we give some suggestions there. Accessorize. The next question, what are some good strength or mobility movements for the rotator cuff? So if you have shoulder pain or rotator cuff issues, don't miss that part of the episode. The next question, how long do you stick with exercises before switching to new ones? Uh, believe it or not, some exercises you should always be doing. Never switch out of them. And others, you should probably be switching up a lot. So listen to the episode to find out which ones. And the final question, this is coming from a trainer. Should gyms still be charging trainers rent to train clients even though they've been closed? So even though they've been mandated closed, uh, what's the deal with that? Should we still be paying them rent? Also, this month, brand new promotion. Last year, this was the biggest promotion we did of the year by far. So we brought it back this year. Great timing, too. It's MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, both correctional exercise programs, both 50% off. By the way, you need zero equipment to follow both of those programs, okay? So let me give you the breakdown of, of either one. MAPS Prime takes you through a self-assessment and teaches you how to design your own priming session. A priming session is better than a warm-up. It gets you set up for your individual body before your workout. So if you have muscle imbalances, if you have movement pattern issues, you can identify them with the self-assessment test. Then you individualize your priming session. Now you do the priming sessions before your workouts, your numbers go up, your strength goes up, you get better results, better ranges of motion, and better control. Now MAPS Prime Pro is purely correctional. It's all about correctional exercise here. You look at all the areas of the body, the ankles, the feet, the hips, the shoulders, the wrists, the fingers, the neck, the back. Find your areas of concern. Follow the correctional exercise tips and programming in MAPS Prime Pro and get better movement, alleviate pain, uh, general better mobility. Okay, those both those programs, 50% off. Here's how you do it. 
Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. That's M A P S F I T N E S S products.com and use the code PRIME50. P R I M E 50. No space for the discount. Dude, I did some research, Justin. You did? Yeah, because I didn't believe this when you told us this the other day. What? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Which which fact? Marvel's. Uh, oh, is that true? It's. it's I. I looked. It and can't looked. be true. Please. I, I, I was hoping it was an April Fool's joke. I so do I. But it's it's Marvel.com posted about it before April first. So this yeah. is like it was like a March twentieth uh, article. Then other publications. I think it might be real. I hope it's not. Yeah. It it it, it can't be real. Dude. And, and it, the people on the left are even upset. Yeah. Right. Everybody is. Yeah. So you got to tell yeah, them. You have to tell them the names. We will. That, that's everything. So they, they came out with a bunch of new uh, characters, new warriors or whatever. They call them the new warriors. And they're, you know, connecting to the new generation or whatever. And so, <laughs> so, so two of the characters, they are, um, they're non, uh, what non-binary. They? They're non-binary. Which, what does that mean? Twins. Okay. Uh, so they don't they have- They don't a, identify like male, yeah, female, so no, just somewhere in the- yeah, there's, we don't know. We don't know what they are. That's yeah. not the weird part. Whatever. No. Okay. I, I mean, don't even tell me if you're a guy. I don't care. You're a superhero. What can you do, right? Sure. Here we go. <laughs> the names of the That's superheroes. That's just where it starts. Yeah. So they're non-binary. The first non-binary superheroes, and one of them, they're twins. Yeah. One is blue. One is pink. Mm-hmm. The blue one is called. Which uh, is ironic. So no, do you see the irony there? Yes. Yeah, because usually that identifies male, female. No. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, yeah. Uh, the blue one is named Snowflake. <laughs> and, the, yeah. and, the, and the pink one is named Safe Space. <laughs> so, <laughs> and what are their superpowers? Yeah. How are they saving people? Yeah, what are their, yeah. su- what are their superpowers? Yeah. The Snowflake, Snowflake apparently can shoot uh, ninja stars made out of snow, I think, or ice. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> Here comes a flurry. No, no. That's the name. That's the sound. Yeah. That's the sound he that's makes. That's just what I imagine in my yeah. head. Like he's like, yeah. <laughs> somebody's robbing a bank. Yeah. No. <laughs> what? It's getting kind of cold here. What's the, happening? The bank, uh, the bank robber's like, ow, that kind yeah. of scratched me. Man, what is this shit? What are you doing? Stop yeah. scratching me. Stop. Oh my God, he saw us. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm creating my safe space. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can penetrate. Get in here with me. Safe space. <laughs> That's what safe space superpower. Right. So safe space I mean, superpower. I see the story happening. That, but is that they can they can create force fields around other people, not themselves though. So oh, like, okay, okay. They can create a safe mm. space for you. Oh, good. So it's so if your feelings are getting hurt or whatever, with, you know? with his brother cry closet in the corner. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not brother. <laughs> no. Just. Oh yeah, sorry. We uh, don't know. Human being in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> I don't identify, but I cry. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe, bro. It. Disney jumped the shark, dude. That it, was hundred percent. Why? And you know what's funny about that is everybody thought it was a joke because people over here are like, oh, I can't believe they're catering to whatever. Then the people on the other side are like, yeah, that they is, hate it too. Oh, it's like totally derogatory. They're like it's condescending. It's yeah. derogatory. I can't believe that they would name a character <laughs> Snowflake right. and Safe Space. Yeah. Pew, pew. No, shoot, <laughs> <laughs> shoot laser kids. That blew up in Disney's face, huh? Oh, oh dude. So are they still launching? The, the, to me, this sounds like something that they had thought of, and then they were going to roll out before like all this pandemic and all this stuff kind of, you know, we all forgot about all this like agenda stuff that everybody was trying <laughs> to do. What do you yeah. think? happened do you think that they hired they were they had a big meeting they're like all right everybody you know yeah. disney's an old company mm-hmm. it's been around for a little while it's a, it's a it's an american old american company maybe they were all having a meeting they're like listen guys america's getting woke yeah we, we need got to get more woke and we aren't we don't know what to do what to say everything we say is wrong mm-hmm. so let's hire let's go on social media and find the most uh you know just Woke. People just yeah, whoever just most woke people we yeah can. that we can find us the wokest them. ever yeah let's bring them in and have them invent our new our next characters you know what yeah. I mean? this is what they came up yeah, with yeah dude yeah. Captain Woke would have even been better than that dude, dude. cry would, closet yeah or, we, I'm sorry that's that's like, say space. snowflake yes. yeah the, snowflake yeah, is yeah, yeah. safe space yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's the other just, what, which ones didn't make the cut you know feelings hurt her you yeah. Know? yeah hey. You're fat. Oh, <laughs> cuck boy. That's a, oh, no. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> yeah, they didn't pass with Disney. That, yeah, they, that, was, yeah. that went a little too far. This is far. great, Justin, but no, this is not going to work. <laughs> I've actually. heard the term on the internet. All right. <laughs> oh my God. I, can't, I looked it up, dude. I looked it up all over the place, and and it's apparently, I don't. I hope it's not real. It can't be real. I mean, it is, right? Mm. Uh, you, you shared the article the other day. We it, it wasn't April Fool's when it got released. Dude. It was before that. What kid? Okay, were you guys into superheroes when you were kids? Did oh, you get- absolutely, dude. Okay. I mean, come on. Iron Man, you got the Punisher, you got Wolverine. What have they done? And now you got <laughs> safe space. What have they done? Yeah, Wolverine like drinks, smokes, and stabs people. Yeah, he, he used like, to like, shred. <laughs> people's throats. Bro, he yeah. used to shred and destroy and kill people like violently, horribly. Yeah. Punisher? Well, that's toxic now. Yeah, pun- yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, it, when I was a kid, I the reason why I liked superheroes was either a I wanted to be like them, or I thought they were cool or tough or whatever. Right. If I was a kid and I read like you know he he throws snowflakes at people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I like what's okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna be. I don't want to be. I'm not gonna dress up as this one. I'm not I'm, scared. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine the kids role playing them as characters, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just makes zero sense. Yeah, they definitely jumped the shark. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of entertainment, um, do you guys see that the movies that are in theaters are now being released on like Amazon and that other platforms? is rad. Yeah. Wow. All of them? Um How many? I don't think every single one, but I've seen quite a bit. Really? Yeah, see, that's interesting to me because I, I would think if you were a big studio, you would just withhold any new releases like at all because that would be like the death of your movie. Right? Oh, they're 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 dying right now. Yeah, they're dying. Nobody. I mean, of would course, it be though? I would. I see. I'm I'm curious if that's more of a <clears throat> something that theaters and have locked the rights down for many years, or have did, is it really that beneficial for the movie? I would think that if you open it up to be streamed in everybody's house, since like X amount of people have that capability, mm-hmm. but may not have access to the theater or have the time to go to the theater, I would think it would drive sales up. They have old yeah. partnerships and deals with- That's what I think. Yes. Yeah. it's You know what it's like? It's almost like um, car manufacturers and car dealerships. How you know how car manufacturers don't, uh, they don't sell directly to consumers. They have to go through dealerships and Tesla- doesn't do that, and that's why there's always been a little bit of a you know a thing between the dealerships and Tesla because Tesla sells their own cars, and, and some states pass law saying no, you have to go through a dealership. There's old uh, partnerships between theaters and the entertainment industry where they say we're only going to release it uh, to you guys, and maybe they do get a bigger cut, maybe they make more money that way. I don't know. Yeah, I would. You you think they would make more money through the theaters or make more money through uh, streaming it? I would think if you're the if you created the movie, you would make more money just letting it go. In today's time, hmm. the, the, it's the, going to have to go that way. The amount it? of volume, yeah. I think, you would just be. It's so it'd be interesting then if if you're seeing that not all are. How did that happen? Why are there some movies that are now being streamed? And then also, Sal, are they? Ones that are like new releases right now, yes. or they've been in theaters for like a month. No, they're new. They're yeah. brand new. That's so interesting to me. Yeah, I'd love theater. to see those numbers, like how that like uh, looks at the end of it. So, this. like for example, um, a movie that my kids have been waiting, my daughter especially, been waiting for is uh, the Trolls Two, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. World Tour one. That's coming out, right? It's supposed to be released, but they're going to release it on, um, I think, Amazon. So who who made? Do you know who made Trolls? Do you know if it's no, like a Pixar know. DreamWorks, or, Dream, yeah, or DreamWorks? Is yeah. it DreamWorks? I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder if it's like company certain companies that already have relationships with like Amazon, and then somebody like a Disney or something would not allow their movie to do. I that. don't know. Mm. I've watched though. Um, I watched The Invisible Man. That was in theaters. Was that good? Actually, really, actually, not bad. It actually the, wasn't bad. Was it super creepy. My aunt said it was amazing, but it's it's, scary it's a thriller. Yeah. Oh yeah. god, you're like, such, such yeah, a wimp. That's what I told her. <laughs> you, should, you don't watch that stuff. Like you should be a character things. on Marvel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I watched scary you know, movie boy. Scared man. You know what I watched on Apple? <laughs> so Frightened Apple's doing boy. it. Uh, Apple's doing it then too because uh, Invisible Man was on Apple. I didn't know that was in theater, right? Yeah, now. so I mm. think I think I don't think it's just one platform. I think they're they're at least I don't know what they're See, doing. This is interesting. I, we also still have a drive through theater <coughs> or a drive in theater in Santa Cruz. Are like, they and, crushing? I, yeah, right now I think there's there's other locations like if you go down towards L.A. and there's like other ones that are just yeah they're still opening it up and and that's a thing right now. Oh, they have one. Theater, they have one over here on, theaters. on uh, Capitol. Mm-hmm. When's the last time you guys did a drive in? Oh, oh my God, years. Probably over a decade. Really? Yeah, yes. Years. I, I, it was for me. It's such a terrible way to watch a movie. It's really only a great way to go to the movies with your girlfriend if, if you're young you want, and you have a date. And yeah, you're trying and you, to get, you know chop a feel. Try yeah, four you want to do a little handy hand stuff yeah, or whatever. Definitely. Then you, then you go in the car because like otherwise, a, in like a sleeping bag. 
Yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah whatever. You know, yeah. I haven't been in such a. Yeah, see, look at the movies that are out. Well, those those aren't all. Yeah, none of those are new. The ones with the purple underneath. Yeah, so like Bloodshot, Invisible Man, those are all in the theaters. Uh, the Hunt. Okay. Uh, I watched Richard Jewell. That was good. Which one? Richard Jewell. It's you know, I, and I don't remember this. This was in nineteen ninety six. I want to say it was. I don't remember the date. But it was the guy, it was the security guard who got blamed for a, a bombing. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I watched that with you. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, yeah it was really good. <laughs> it was really good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I guess yes, you I were. I could contribute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I watched um, Upgrade. Was uh, I don't think I talked about that on the podcast, did I? No, uh, I did. I did a long time ago. Dude, yeah, it was a great movie. I should really pay attention to you more. Yeah, yeah. you really should. What did he just say and the other day? Like, Westworld yeah. is better than that movie. Yeah. Sorry. You shared that meme, the, the, the video meme this morning of the Jurassic Park. I shared that like a fucking four or five days ago to yeah, our I thread. Oh, you did? Yeah, you know what the, that okay. is, is that it seeds. You yeah. know, like they, they just get in and then like eventually they grow into something. I just don't know the, brain. the origins of it. That's yeah, the big yeah. joke here at Mind Pump, right? We, we we credit Sal for every idea that happens. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah, it's, no matter if it came from Justin, Doug, or no, myself. No, let's it's be like, honest. It's, it's like <laughs> he just eight, says it with more conviction. It's like 85%. So it's <laughs> you guys I come up with at least 15%. <laughs> yeah, right. It's such a great idea, Sal. But anyway, so. the uh, I, you know, I like the fact that the movies are in your house because I, I think it's great. But they're 20 bucks. It's twenty bucks, but to buy I see one. that's not a big deal to me because you would pay way more than that going to the theater. Yeah, you pay ten dollars a ticket. There's so. a market there. I, w I, I would be into that. Yeah, like twenty bucks if you're at home. The convenience of it's brand new. You know, like I, I, like I, I think I think the move or the pivot for them, and this time maybe this time starts something like this is. You have uh, the price goes down as as it's older of a movie, right? So if it's a brand new oh, release, yeah, I would smart. pay twenty five to thirty dollars, maybe even fifty if I really want to see it. You know, twenty five dollars to see that movie or more because it's brand new and, and mm -hmm. technically would be in theaters. And then after like three months, then it drops to a rate. And then after three months after that, then drops another. That that's would, actually pretty smart. Right. I, I think yeah. that's really smart. Now, th now think of it this way, though. Like theaters, uh, you know how they make all their money. It's all the candy yeah. and popcorn and yeah, shit like that. It's oh, marked yeah, up by seven, seven. The popcorn times. times. Yeah. Oh, dude, stupid. that's how they. And, and they they've been pivoting for a long time. Box to, of hot tamales is five ninety nine. <laughs> stupid. What the fuck? You yeah, get like dude. fifteen pounds of it if you Bro, go to Walmart. Let, let me oh, tell yeah. you. Let me tell you about Italians, dude. Going to the movie, we smuggle all kinds of shit. Yeah, in the theater. smugglers. Oh, you're bringing yeah. your whole. You're bringing dinner in there. And, you know, I think sandwiches. And, and they never. Yeah. They never. Or at least <laughs> they don't for me. Like they. They don't even stop you from doing that anymore because I think everybody that works there does the same thing too. I know. I think they all know it's absurd. Ooh, look what I got away with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nobody gives you shit. One thing that I notice is when you're a teenager and you're smuggling shit in, the dude is way more likely to stop you. When you're a 40 year old confident man, yeah, yeah. and I just got my food in my hand. Oh, yeah. Like, I just, really? Are we doing this? Yeah, yeah. I, I, don't yeah. Even, I don't even say I just walk right by. That's yeah. all yeah. you. My, I, my, my pockets. <laughs> 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 you see this? You see this? This is a flask. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I. In fact, Excuse I, me, sir. What? You got, we have a problem here? Yeah. No, 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 no. Just got to. I got to tear your ticket. Okay, good. You don't even say anything. You don't even say anything. I, I'm, I, in fact, I'm confident. I bet I could just walk through without buying a ticket. Just don't even say anything. <laughs> yeah. Just confidently. I know. You know what I mean? Nobody even cares. What's the kid going to just keep just walk, just, walk in and sit down? Yeah, just walk through. If he says something, just wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Just <laughs> oh, walk you got your theater. flashlight? Does that make you important? Yeah. yeah. Or, hey, remember, remember? Oh, you don't remember? Okay. <laughs> I actually had, I've had that happen in gyms I've managed where my front desk staff was not, they felt intimidated. Yeah. No, and I've, I've had dudes. I know I've had members do that too. Yeah. Where they just walk by yeah, and they're yeah. like, oh, um, you need to get your, and they'll be like, yeah, whatever. And they'll just keep walking. <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll like, stop them. <laughs> it's great. Stop this it's, person. It's great that what it happens. I mean, it's, it's clever on their part, right? Because it's always like some, you know, 19 year old front desk girl who weighs like a buck 20 and she's yeah. working behind the desk. And it's always some middle-aged man. Yeah, and yeah. it never happens. And so what's she going to do? Run and tackle him? Like, yeah, no. Yeah. So he just keeps walking in and then she's like, wait a second. <laughs> what yeah. do I do? I didn't get a training for this situation. <laughs> just grabs a rip fuel right out of the yeah, refrigerator. Just starts, just starts, starts drinking, drinking it. it. Walks over to the treadmill. While he's on the phone. <sighs> yeah. Here again, you got a trash can back there? Yeah, Here, yeah, take I got care you. Of this. She doesn't want to interrupt him because he's on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, hold on a second. Keep walking. <laughs> Where did we do that? We actually did something like that once. Wasn't there like a wine festival or something? Oh <laughs> yes, yes. When we were in Austin. Austin. When we were in Austin, that. Texas. That's it was, right. And it we was like a hundred. It was like a hundred some dollars to get in. It was ridiculous. <laughs> And yeah, we I'm were there paying that. We were there for the paleo thing, right? What's it called? What's it? Paleo FX. It's that paleo FX, yeah. right? We were there for that. Weed. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. and we were bored in there. And so we went across the street in Austin, Texas, and they had this big wine fair that looked like way more fun. Yeah. And when we got up to the front, they're like, oh, it's like a hundred something dollars. And then I think we asked somebody, like, we tried to <laughs> 
well, we're mind pump, you know, that didn't work. Yeah. And so they're like, fuck it, let's just walk in. And act like we own the place. That's like, yo, it was your idea. Yeah. yeah. Adam's like, don't worry. We're I was just like, gonna... I like this idea. He's like, they're not going to say anything. We yeah. just walk by. Yeah. <laughs> and he did. He just walked yeah. through. Yeah, we got all the way until some really old guy was just like, <laughs> no. Yeah, that's some old the guy. security guy. Yeah, he had a gun and everything. Takes sure. his job hell sure. sure of it. That's the guy that will stop you. The kid, yeah. whatever, they're just be like, I don't want to stop no, those no. grown ass, no. grumpy looking guys. I don't know if you're a terrorist or what. No, the retired cop who's got nothing better to do yep, yep. <laughs> some 60 like, something year old dude he's gonna take his job serious yeah. Yeah. your ass he's is not, not fucking around getting, he stopped us and then we had to <laughs> yeah, fucking, we, <laughs> we got real close so hey what's funny. uh what's happening over uh what's happening with india right now with the lockdown oh you guys oh my god have you guys seen the videos of how they're what they're doing to get no you to just get, told me about it there's cops and you know whatever cops roam in the streets and they have these long sticks and if they see you like <laughs> There's video, and I'm laughing because you know it's a, it's a stressful situation. So I don't really think it's funny. I laugh sometimes at bad shit. Yeah, they'll man. they'll. They beat people with the sticks. Damn. So like, there's a dude on a rickshaw, you know, like or whatever, yeah. and the cops are walking up, like, and they're yelling at him, and they're just hitting him. And he's like, ah, and he's like getting on and trying to run away and shit to what? get him. What? Yes, Holy dude. Shit. They're super, super. Well, because remember, India's yeah. got a billion people. Many areas of India are extremely packed, and then oh, there's yeah. a lot densely of, populated. And then there's a lot of poor God, sanitation. I didn't realize that India is that much bigger than we are. India is the second most populated uh, country in the world. Wow, oh, it's close yeah. behind China. Yeah, it's wow. it's the largest democracy in the world uh, for sure. But they're not acting like one with the, wow. by beating people. I didn't know. That's crazy. Dude. Yeah, is dude. It? Doug's pulling up some videos, <laughs> beating lockdown. Yeah, see, they just oh. beat the. Oh shit! Holy yeah. Shit. Come they got on. sticks and they'll fuck you up and what? then make your ass go home. Oh, wow. Yeah. Man. I wasn't joking, dude. Dude, it, dude, seriously. And they're doing this to people. See, look at this kid right here. He's he's like yelling at him. Get back. Hitting his bike. Breaking his... Uh, dude, his, hey, people complain about being in America, dude. You want to send videos to people like this. Look at that. Wow. Like, it, I guess what? it could be like this. <laughs> dude. So they're, they're, they're super, super aggressive. Look at these people all getting their ass beat. And then here's the crazy thing that's happened. There's a, a humanitarian crisis over there because they have... I don't know how many... He's spanking him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know how many um, uh, hundreds of thousands of migrant workers or millions of migrant workers that they have that work there from other countries that live in these like kind of shanty towns or whatever. Because businesses are shutting down, these migrant workers have nowhere to go. They have no work. Yeah, what are so they supposed a, to do? Well, what are they doing? There, there's a massive migration of hundreds of thousands of migrant workers now walking through India trying to get to the next country or whatever. And who knows how they're going to handle How's that going to get handled? Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. What about what's going, going through the gauntlet of all these assholes hitting them with sticks? Yeah, dude, what, about the, what about the the riots that are happening in China too? Oh, you saw that in Wuhan. Yeah. Yeah, they, they were so... Uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to know what to believe <coughs> with China. Um, out of China. <laughs> yeah. yeah, dude. Communist countries are really... I mean, obviously, they control their media. They control everything to a whole crazy degree. They... Their internet internet can be on lockdown, but the apparently the way that they handled the lockdown was was crazy. Um, some people were starving because they wouldn't let them out of their houses. Um, they would weld people's doors shut, so you're stuck in your home what? literally because oh, they'd weld okay. your door shut so you couldn't open the door to get out. And so now that they're letting people out, uh, apparently the residents are furious with the way that they were being handled, yeah. and they're, um, they're 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 rioting. They're coming out and rioting against the the government because of the way that they all got. But I couldn't imagine imagine that getting your door welded shut by Dude. officials. Yeah, you have some you like medical emergency. Good luck. No. Now really, you, really crazy. Now, do you think we're going to see crazy shit like this if if the lockdown continues? I mean, we just extended it again. Do you think like we're going to start seeing people start to get? Really- I should hope not. We okay. So here's the difference between <clears throat> the big difference between a country like America and China is one big thing is that we're the most <laughs> we're the most armed country in the world. Um, if if it gets crazy, there it's not just a bunch of arm you no know, people without arms that are going to be welded in their doors. You got there's some, the people own more guns than the than the local police and, and stuff in this country. So I don't see them getting that draconian. I, I can't see that happening. Um, so I, I don't I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. There may be hot spots where you know they try and clamp things down, but I just uh, in yeah. Americans and Americans are also f- we're we're free. We're we we've lived free. Um, so we're probably there's there's yeah, less. We're room allowed to, push to us. complain. 
and there's less room to push us. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, I tell you, so, a, a, hot, know. a hot business to be involved in right now that I see more and more. I didn't even know this existed until I, I don't even know what made me go down this rabbit hole of researching this. But there is uh, quite a few uh, contractors that are creating these like underground bunkers. There's like a market for this. Oh, I bet right and, now. Oh, and the and prepper business, I'm dude, sure there is. Huge. So like, I think, I don't remember what I read or I heard this. And then it, again, I started searching it. And then I went down this rabbit hole of like, okay, if there's someone making these right now, there's got to also be somebody who's like already thought of this or been in construction or made crazy ones. Dude, there is million dollar freaking bunkers. Like bunkers that cost like a million to five million dollars to have these things, and they're like super luxurious. Mm, yeah. I mean, like the most amazing five star hotel that you've ever stayed at, better than that. Like over the top, what they're doing, it's yeah. insane. I've like seen indoor some pools, I, I've seen oh, some yes. theaters and stuff. Yo, theaters, yeah. indoor pools, and just the 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 uh, the space that they have for restaurants, and they could feed. They could feed. They have enough canned food and food ready. They could feed all the residents there for like the next five years. So, what does it look like if you had to like live in something underground? Like, what are you, what are your essentials? So they even do. So they're even doing things like this that I think are smart to think about. That like, okay, you understand this is like 145 feet underground. So like where you would have a uh, a window on your bedroom wall, or whatever. They have like a digital. Uh, window that is shooting stuff for outside, so you're still looking like you're looking. Oh, so it's even real from outside. So it's not just the painting or something. Yes, you can watch all the zombies. Yes, and it (laughs) changes. Oh my god! You can watch the nukes. (laughs) (laughs) Go look outside, honey. Well, Uh, some of these are built to handle a direct hit from a nuke. uh, You know what? You know when these really started taking off? It was during the Cold War. Yeah, Yeah. that's when they first started. That's what I read (laughs) during the Cold War. And they have uh, air cleaning systems that are that can handle fallout. Mm -hmm. So when you're in there and you know nukes are going off and there's fallout or whatever, you'll have clean air. You've got sewage systems in there, home gyms. They've got theaters. They've got now. You know what's crazy about these things? I want a mini golf setup. Yeah, yeah. You guys ever you guys ever watch the Twilight Zone? Yeah. Oh man, they've got good episodes on on stuff like this and how people. There was one episode where they uh, aliens. You don't know it's aliens, but people's powers going out uh, and none of their electronics work or whatever. And within a short period of time, they start blaming each other, the people, and then they end up killing someone. And then the aliens up above are like, "Okay, the test looks like it takes approximately seven days of a little bit of chaos for them to wow. start turning on their tr- on each other." And it was yeah. a really Such good a episode, brilliant, re- like a uh, well-written show. Such a well-written show. But yeah. I-, I would hate to be stuck in a bunker with a bunch of because people can get weird. You yeah. know what I mean? When there's like, like there's no controls, you're just stuck in this bunker. Yeah, but it's with- still it's still it's not like a little bunker. It's like a city underground. So it's, you know, just like if you didn't like your neighbors, you don't say hi to them, you don't go see them. It's the, you have that much room and space in there. People get weird, dude, when they, they when they're locked up and they and they know that they can't leave, mm-hmm. you know? You, it's you ever read, read the Lord of the Flies, you ever read that book? I mean, oh, I, yeah. I think yeah. if you're in a bunker like this where you paid a, a million to 3 million dollars, you have a you are already thinking this is a possibility this could happen. So you're not getting like the crazy person who's down there <laughs> who doesn't who didn't think this was a possibility and is freaking out like you're getting somebody who goes i've got a million dollars to invest in this because i believe one day we may be cooped up they're already mentally prepared yeah. or you're not getting like really crazy but they have a lot of money yeah, yeah. or well, that right well you know apparently the rumor has it that the the u.s government has and they built this of course during the cold war and they've continued to up upkeep it or whatever that we have an entire underground uh city or whatever that was built so that the government it's can in kansas continue running well, you know where it is yeah i looked at it it was a, it was really? an undisclosed i thought they had why one under they... the denver airport or some there's some weird conspiracy <laughs> why would, alex jones why would they tell stuff. everybody yeah where it's at well it was it wasn't no one knew about it before but it's it's been there for a long old, time the old one maybe mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah because it's like it, the, the i think the it's reason the, aunt the reason why i think they picked the destination is because it's like literally like in the middle of nowhere like the next nearest like uh, city or something is I, I can't remember if it was like hundreds of miles away or whatever so the likelihood of someone bombing that area or even close to that area is extremely low and it's like a whole underground city of all these bunkers you know speaking mm. of the cold war and stuff that just reminded me of a conversation i was having with uh, with some of my cousins yesterday so news came out that u.s intelligence um, now has evidence that China, um, you know, really uh, repressed information of when the coronavirus really started to come out. Yeah. And because of that, like they really, they silenced scientists, they silenced doctors, they didn't tell anybody. 
And because of that, of course, now we have a pandemic. And so my cousins are like pissed off and screw that. You know what we need to do? We need to never trade with China again. We should never support a communist country. And I, you know, we had this big debate because I, I reminded them of the, of the Cold War. You know, the, the Soviets were also communist. And we had both sides had nukes pointed right at each other. And we came within... Like people don't realize if you read history, we oh, came, yeah. bro, we came it was in scary. There, we came so close several times to all out nuclear war yeah. several times. And we've never come even close to that with China. And the reason is because we trade heavily with them. You know, when, when countries trade heavily, you know, it's, it's, you don't, the, the odds that you're going to go to war with each other is way, way well, less. Well, isn't that, isn't that what kind of debunks the conspiracy theories about China did this all on purpose? Like, why, sure. why would they do something and potentially sabotage a part, a, comp, or a, a country like us who does so it much crushes business. their own economy too? Right. Like yeah. We're so intertwined, it would destroy them uh, as well. So that's the, and there's this interesting fact that mm. uh, I read in an old book. I don't know who said this. It might have been Milton Friedman, but he said, no two countries that have a McDonald's franchise have ever gone to war with each other. So in other words, what, say that uh, again? No, no two countries that have a McDonald's franchise have ever gone to war with each other, which is interesting. Yeah, I don't know if that's true. It was an old book. Uh, that's a but random the, statistic. But the point that he's making is that, you know, if, if they're if they're trading with each other, yeah. they're not going to go to – They're, they're going to work it out. Yeah, because what I'm afraid of is after all of this happens is because we've already had some like tensions with them anyway with trade. Is that people aren't like fuck them? Cut them yeah, out. Whatever. Close completely. It's just gonna make. It's just gonna make. So I wanted worse. to. I wanted to share some cool news with you guys. That so I've been going through and um, you know uh, normally I don't do this. Normally uh, Rachel or uh, Brianna or Katrina is handling this side with like our partners and you know I've actually got on the phone with everybody. I, I told them I said hey you know I think it's a, a good move to have one of us owners speak to them and just see how they're doing and, and make sure that uh, we're doing everything we can to support them. And so I've been kind of like making my rounds on like all of our partners and, and, and talking and seeing how we can support or what they're doing. And, you know, so far it's been really, it's been really good conversations. I was a little weary about it. I thought maybe that uh, uh, a lot of them would be struggling really bad. A lot of the partners we partner with are direct to consumers so are doing well. And uh, one of them that I got off the phone with the other day was uh, Magic Spoon. And what's really cool is we're going to do something with them. And that was, it was so great to hear that they were doing fine uh, during this. Not only are they doing fine, but our whole conversation ended up turning into, hey, what is a way that we can do to, to give back? And so something that we did was reduced rates on our commercial and advertising for them. And with that extra money, they then can take for every box of cereal that people purchase from us that you will also they'll also donate that to a food bank. Such a great deal. And yeah. they've already done this over in New York yeah, already. Like Twenty thousand boxes they, yeah. they gave to to kid or to kids who rely on school Public lunches. Schools, yeah. Uh -huh. Right. And we do they do uh, Magic Spoon does extremely well with us. Our audiences receive them, love I mean we keep getting more and more people that love the product. Um and so uh, you're talking about hundreds to thousands of boxes now because of Mind Pump will be sent over to uh, the food bank, Mind Pump and Magic Spoon, of course. Like because of them, uh, they'll be able to do something like that. Wow, so, that's yeah, really that's great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, for kids, I like them because um, especially if you have a kid who doesn't like protein-containing food, which is common, right? That's, that's a common it complaint is. I hear from parents is that their kids don't want to eat eggs uh, or chicken mm -hmm. or red meat, red, yeah, mm -hmm. steak or anything like that. All they all want to eat is carbohydrates. So it's it's hard for them to give their kids adequate protein or whatever, uh, you know. And and good. This is a it's this is not a whole food, right? Whole foods are always the best, but it's a it's one way to sneak in high protein, and it's it's quality protein. It's whey protein. It's not garbage protein, and it tastes delicious. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's like it a, tastes delicious. Yeah, it's yeah. That's why it's so sneaky. I know. Since we started this podcast, I know you've teased me about that forever, but I mean, I'm sorry. I think I, I think more people relate with me that. You know, it's hard to. Yeah, what, you eat a bowl every day. <laughs> I would every, say every it's day, a but treat, dude. it's definitely it's every some, day. It, it, what's well, right now? It might be every day. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, it might be every day. So it's a little. It's definitely. Uh, Are you well, still the blueberry? Is that still your favorite? Well, blueberry's hard to get. The blueberry sells out. Yeah. So I've I've only got. I'm like, and it's so. I've funny. rationed it by using blueberry with fruity. <laughs> so you're so. That's I was just I'm gonna just mix. I was mashing. just gonna say I have oh, really? one box of blueberry and yeah. I have like ten boxes of fruity. Dude, you gotta ration it. So I'll do exactly that. Is I'll go half of my my box of fruity with a, a, a little bit of blue because I love the blueberry so I try and like stretch it out as long and it's it makes a good combo yeah though. no it mixes yeah. perfectly well together but mm. I use you can seem to get a fruity still which I, is my favorite too 
Uh, but blueberries hard to get a hold of, man. I'm always refreshing and trying to see when they get a, a new stock. Is, is toilet paper of cereal? Speaking man. of of, <laughs> uh, of food or whatever, are you're feeding? You guys are feeding Max some yep. solids now, right? Mm -hmm. He just we just introduced eggs yesterday. Oh no! Mm -hmm. How do you do with them? Good. Well, today is day, so they say. I think three. They, he needs three feedings. I think in a row or something. Like that. Three days in a row. They say to see if he has some sort of an allergy mm -hmm. or a reaction to it. Today was day when I was leaving the house to work. Today they were. Uh, her and the nanny were feeding that to him right now. So we'll know, I guess, after today and tomorrow. It seemed like the he's been fine. Uh, we've introduced, let's see here, we've introduced uh, chicken, beef, avocado. Now, how do you give it to him? You guys blend it up and then yeah. mix it with something? <clears throat> yeah, we whatever? make all, uh, everything that he has is whole food and organic. That's the first kid. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we- Wait uh, till two or three. Yeah, <laughs> that's what everyone says, you know what I'm saying? I don't, you know, I, here's a, I can't take any credit for that. Uh, Katrina's a rock star. Um, and I, and, and she probably wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't have support. Um, if we didn't have support to take a lot of the load off of her, I could, I can't, I can only imagine how hard that is for the average person. So when I say things like that, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and blessed for the support that I have because, um, you know, I don't expect that, uh, every parent could handle or do that. It's just, sure. I know it's a lot of work. I take Katrina almost every night is, you know, planning what he's going to be eating in two or three mm -hmm. days and blending it, uh, blending it all up and then freezing it and, and getting mm -hmm. ready for that. And so, you know, and then she, again, she has someone who's assisting her to make sure that she can help while she's also working. And he's so. what? He's eight months. Yeah, he's gonna be he's gonna be nine. So doesn't that God is it just me or did that fly? Yeah, like I feel like it was yesterday. You had a kid. Yeah, it might have flown for you guys. Uh, the, <laughs> the, it the always does. first six months is very twilight zone, man. It really is. It's like that's uh, the hardest. Yeah, and and I, I uh, you know him sleeping on my chest and things like that. Like and you're like oh my God, you're you're so in love with this thing that you have now that you just you're so bonded and connected with that you've never had anything like that. So all that's amazing. But it's very, uh, you know, Twilight Zone of just, it's the same, it feels like the same thing over every single day. That's why they call it the grind, dude. It's yeah, this first six months is like a grind like that. At, at month seven, um, you know, you, you really started to see kind of a personality coming out, like him being a lot more aware, being able to distinguish the difference between mom and dad and like, you know, all that's happening right now. And now he's obviously sitting up really well and... You know, he's like just the first day, uh, the other day was the first time that he like sits through me reading a book to him. So I've literally now, I think I'm on like the fifth book now. I've been reading to him since like almost day one, but it's not you really- You can reading. tell now he's into it. Yeah, yeah. It's not really reading to him. It's me reading children's books. Because <laughs> yeah. he ain't paying attention. You know what I'm saying? He's sucking on things, looking at other places. He's not even looking at the book in front yeah. of him. But net, you can tell that his, his sight has like fully come in mm -hmm. and his depth perception and colors and everything. Because now when I open the book and sit him between my legs and read to him, like he's listening and he's paying attention to it, which is cool, you know? Yeah, but it's, it's even still so early there that- you know, I can only read like one short book to keep his attention span. After that, he gets restless and wants to do something. But that's already been a leap. And, you know, those things, you I couldn't do those things in months four and five. Like, so that stuff is cool. It's crazy how fast they they, they change. I mean, it's like, I, rem I remember coming home and my kid being different from the day before. Like, all of a sudden, they said something new or their their personality changed. I'm like, holy cow, that was... yeah. You like did, and you know there was a um God, where did I watch this? There was a I think it was on Netflix. I can't remember where I saw this. Anyway, there was a this 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 docu series on babies and, and children. And uh, one myth is that children and babies grow a little bit every night. Oh yeah, that's the Netflix series that I talked about. It was that yeah, one. Yeah, right? it's really good. And and there was a lady that did some pioneering research and showed that kids do have growth spurts. That they won't grow, won't grow, won't grow, and then all of a sudden, boom! boom. It's yeah. just explosion of growth, and it's crazy, like an inch overnight type of deal. Insane, yeah. And that's why you know, and parents have known this for a long time, where your kids are like grouchy yeah, they or pains that they didn't have before, or all of a sudden they're sleeping like crazy. Like that'll happen to my son. You know, he's, oh, yeah. he's a teenager. They eat like a horse all of a sudden. Oh, that'll be that'll be my son. All of a sudden, yeah. I'm you know, like last night I made uh, burgers, so I made these little burgers with with like smaller pieces of bread, so they were kind of like. Not quite as small as a White Castle burger, but not as big as a, as a massive burger. So they're a little smaller. And my son's over, he ate like four or five of them. And he's just like, do we have anything else? I'm like, uh, 
You're growing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah, going yeah, through yeah. a growth spurt. Something's going Either on. Either that or, you know, like when you haven't seen like a cousin, a nephew or someone like that and, and like it's only been two weeks or something and you're like, oh my God, like you swear you grew like four inches since yep. I've seen you. Like it's, you you obviously can tell there's something happening even that short. When you hear that as an adult, it's, it's totally not the same. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you, you look bigger. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? You look old. You got fat. Yeah. I mean, I'm totally having baby fever though right now or, or Jessica's going into her 12th week. And I think next week the baby's supposed to be the size of a of a lime or something like that. Yeah. You're, did you follow that? Oh when you God! Were? Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. Katrina is like so uh, all that stuff. I've read right kidney so bean. Last then, night yeah. I'm teasing her about this last night because uh, so my my youngest brother and sister who uh, like I played a role in raising because we were over ten years apart, right? So I was already a young teenager when they were infants and toddlers. So back then. Um, you know, baby monitors were just an audio thing that you put in there. And when the baby cried, you go in there and you check. Well, you know, now technology, like we, his heartbeat changes, his temperature changes, <laughs> yeah. the fucking cameras on him. He moves, we get, uh, we get a fucking notice. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, it's crazy. Like <laughs> the ability to, and Katrina is like, she watches him the whole time he sleeps. And I always tease her. Like it, she's got, we've got, she's got the iPad who's linked and showing it. Then she has her phone that's on it. And we're like sitting on the bed and we're talking. And I'm like, she's got the big iPad that's going of him. And then she's got the phone in her hand and we're talking. <laughs> I'm like, would you relax? <laughs> well, she, cause right now what he's doing, like he's, he's just learned to roll over in his bed. Mm -hmm. So he's rolling over in the bed and she, she wants to keep going up there every time she does it. She's like, I want to make sure he's breathing. Okay. I said, honey, <laughs> yeah. if he's not, he'll move. Like he's breathing. Okay. She's like, he's never rolled over till just now. Are you kidding? Me and I'm like, hun, he's he's already it's in instinctly built in him to want to want to breathe. He's already eight, he's eight months old, he's past yeah, the scare, he's past the yeah. Well, yeah. I, yeah, but they still tell you statistically that some people, some kids, all it takes is that one, one, per, one, half those percent. statistics, it's it, that never like that's the thing. Like, I was so glad when Courtney stopped uh working in pediatrics because it's like <laughs> you get like all those statistics you you mention all the time. She sees of, like, them all. This is, yeah, she sees the worst case of every one of those, and it's like the you know, the the two to five percent, you know, worst case scenarios, and then brings that kind of information home. And I'm just like, oh my god, yeah. okay, it's how I, I gotta feel, calm you down. It's how I feel about what's going on right now with COVID. Oh, yeah. I mean, everything is it. it it, if it's not scary, it's not. It's not going to get so, shared. It's so hard. It's. So, I'll tell you what. I, I. I am. I am living through it myself. I mean, this is. This is like one of my biggest triggers, and I'm living through it. And so it's hard. It's a, you. It's a, you have to have a daily practice to tackle it. It's not as easy as saying, "Don't freak out. It's not a big deal." Here's the real numbers or whatever. You have to like daily check yourself. Daily do. Well, the it's hard because yeah. it is a big deal, right? It like, is. You know, hundreds of thousands of people are probably going to die. That's a big fucking deal. Yeah, but it's but you don't what, what ends up happening, like with someone like myself, and I, I I'm sure there's people listening who can um identify with this, um, is that I'll sit there and I'll 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 have looping thoughts of worst case scenario. Oh, I know. Oh my god, That's, what if my mom gets sick? Mm -hmm, what if my dad mm -hmm. what about my kids? Oh my god, and my son will cough upstairs. He was he was doing his homework upstairs and he drank some water, went down the wrong pipe, he started coughing. Yeah. Immediately, I'm like, I, why, why are, you, are you coughing? What's going on? Huh. Hey, what's, you know. How are you feeling? Yeah. Are you okay? And, and Jessica's like, dude, you need to chill the fuck out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, dude, this is totally. Oh, my my two best friends, I, it's, we have these threats. Like, I just, there's days I choose not even to go on it because it's like, it, that's and it's, smart. Yeah. yeah. I just, I just, in it's, because it's this, you know, share, sharing articles back of, oh my God, China lied about this. Oh, look at yeah. these new stats. Oh my God, New York's spiking over here. And it's like all this 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 frenzy and and craziness and you know like I, I try and stay in the middle like I, I really feel um I really think it's very important that we social distance and we 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 do our due diligence as a community to mm -hmm. to do the best that we can to not spread this thing and interact with each other. And to me that is the best and the smartest thing that all of us can do. But at the same time too I don't when when you when you see the, the the amount of things that people die from uh, from everything from suicide to AIDS to influenza to car accidents I mean hundreds of thousands millions, millions of people die a year from all of these tragic things but yet we still drive in a car we still yeah. potentially hang out in a facility that has somebody that has AIDS we still do all these things and still get by but because this is so such a hot topic right now and mm -hmm. because the way the news perpetuates the information it's it's I, sometimes i wonder if the the panic and the stress 
that we are causing on ourselves uh, may induce more harm than the actual of likelihood of you getting COVID. It always does. Right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it always does. It, there's, you need to have rational um, rational fear. Easier said than done. Again, I'm, yeah. I'm speaking from personal experience, but... It, you know, it's 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 the th- it's thinking of the potentials. It's worrying about stuff that's not happening right now. That's what causes uh, the big problems. And you're right. You know, um, you know they did studies on this. I remember learning these in uh, in, in high school psychology class, where you know that he brought up this, these these studies where uh, people's fear of shark attacks and the perception of shark attacks exploded after Jaws. Jo- after Jaws, yeah. after the movie Jaws came out. Too. And and everybody, they ask people, do you, do you think shark attacks are on the rise? And everybody's like, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're not, they're the consistent no. all year long. And people are more afraid of getting a shark attack than drowning, and, and which crazy. the odds are way uh, yeah. way more that you're going to drown. Yeah, you exactly. know? Yeah. It's really weird. It's it, really, really crazy. It is. Yeah, I had one fun fact though I wanted to leave us with here. There was a, I was researching and I had no idea who created the bulletproof vest. So I guess it was a pizza guy in Detroit who had- what? Yeah, who had basically he was trying to like protect himself because he'd been shot like like two or three times previously to this, and then um, got uh, a hold of Kevlar and then started experimenting with it and actually like shot himself to see oh. if it worked. Wait and- a second, wait a second, you mean to tell me that some pizza delivery guy in yeah. Detroit thought of a bulletproof vest before our military did? Yes. What? Yes. That wow. can't be Isn't true. that crazy? That's beyond crazy. What was Kevlar used for before bulletproof vests? Yeah, that's a good question. Was it question. for crashes, I think, or something like that? Something like that. Wow. Yeah, yeah but it's it's crazy. Because well, it's not like the first attempt in history. I think it, it was the first with Kevlar, you know, because before that, I'm sure they used metal and like, you yeah. know. Well, yeah, like, like, a, like a knight would wear those chain looking like, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, so. You can't be walking around with that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Ke- oh, wait. So what, how do you say Casimir Zeglin was a Polish engineer born in 1869 near Tarnpol who invented the first bulletproof vest. So that was the very first yeah. bulletproof vest, but not the Kevlar one. Not the one. Kevlar one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. But, wow. Yeah. But yeah, I just thought that was crazy. A that, pizza guy. That, you know, you never know. <laughs> That's why I'm thinking, like, with this whole scare and everything, it's like Some know, people's in- ideas are, oh. are, are are going right now crazy, and they're, they're trying to invent things. I'm so glad you brought that. You know, that, and that's the thing. I'm going to try and bring that for our conversation is some of these positive stories of people that are um, entrepreneurs that have pivoted hard and quick and are having success. Mm-hmm. Uh, talking to an old high school uh, friend of mine, good, good buddy, uh, he was actually talking shit to me. He said that my Dallas Cowboys are the Tiger King of of football <laughs> <laughs> because we 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 just picked up we just signed Alden uh, Smith. And if you don't know Alden Smith, Alden yeah. Smith has been bounced around from teams because he's of on Niners. Oh my God, he says yeah. he's got he's so crazy. many. He was at he was actually at. Um, David Lee's birthday party that I was at, and I I met him, and he ha- there was probably I don't know, thirty or so uh, professional athletes and myself uh, there. Wynn was there, the agent we just had, and uh, he was a total immature kid, asshole. Like you could just tell, it made sense why he gets in trouble in the league right. so much just mm-hmm. by seeing the way he interacted at a, at a really fancy dinner and stuff. So he's teasing me about uh, the Cowboys picking him up and talking shit, and that led me, hey man, how's your family? You know how your kids doing? How's business? Everything like that, and he's in the wine industry, and I know that like he's a he's like a wine manager of like one of the biggest Napa wines up there, and he does wine tours and sells kit. Mm-hmm. And so I'm thinking, wait a second, that's probably gonna be shut down. And he goes, oh man, I'm over here just making lemonade, and I laughed. I said, well, what are you doing? He's like, oh, do I do wine tasting virtually now? I just sold actually like five massive cases to a couple just off just off the phone about thirty minutes ago. What? So he's doing just by his descriptors. Yes, what? yes. No way. So he does virtual wine tasting. He tastes it and tells them? Yes. And, ta- <laughs> and talks about it and pairs it and does all that what? to them virtually. And then sh- and then offers them probably a discount or a good deal on a case of wine and then ships. Well, good and he, for him. Right. And th- I mean, that didn't that, he's, that didn't even exist before. Nobody yeah. was doing that before. Well, no. It didn't, Interesting. It, it only makes sense now. It didn't make sense before. Right. Wow, that's brilliant. Right. So well, I mean, And people are probably buying more alcohol. Anyway. Of, yeah. and, and, well, we yeah, just, sure. I mean, that article just came out that you mentioned before, that uh, 51% it's up right now in uh, alcohol sales. So yeah, I mean, shit, what a brilliant, I, really cool to see people that- you know, are 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 proactively doing things like that and having a positive mindset on all this. And there's a huge demand yeah. right now. I'm telling you right now, there's a huge demand. If you're listening and you need work uh, in some areas, there's a huge demand for people to buy people groceries. The you know the pickup. 
I tried to do it, and it was like two or three weeks out. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of old people out there that are afraid to go to the grocery store. That's a great job to do. You make a little bit of money, and it, you're doing something good for people. I've, you know, I've seen more of those trucks in my in my complex than I've ever seen before. Like uh, the other day, I was like writing something like healthy food, something. I'm like, wow, I've never seen these guys before. Mm-hmm. There's so many people that are obviously getting food delivered to their house that I, I'm seeing all these new brands I've never seen mm-hmm. before. Very cool. First question is from Barbells and Husafels. What are the best accessory lifts to increase overhead press numbers? Ah, uh, the overhead press. I'll tell you one that had a huge impact on me. One movement or one type of movement in particular um, that just, it really made me, it probably added, I'd say 15 pounds to my overhead press. And that's coming from someone who's been working out for a long time. You know, I've been stuck at certain numbers forever. So getting me even to go up, you know, five pounds is a big deal. And those are heavy overhead carries. I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, just pressing something overhead like a a pair of dumbbells, a barbell, a single plate, um, kettlebells, straighten my arms out, having good posture, so maintaining that strong tension, and then walking for 20, 30 yards, putting them down, resting, and then repeating because it gave me so much more strength mm-hmm. at the at the at the top end of my movement where I tend to, where I I And you're reinforcing have, that support at yes. that that top position, which is everything with the overhead press. Yes. Uh, which yeah, that, that that's a great exercise. I think for me too, like uh, adding uh rotational elements to help then even more sort of bo- bolster that stability in the in the whole shoulder joint uh, is huge for me. So uh one of them was like a kettlebell halo. Uh, if, if I'm trying to be a little more relatable, you can do this with like a dumbbell where you're rotating it over your head and in front of your body. But uh, I like I like went down the rabbit hole with this, and, and that's where I got into Indian clubs and into mace bells uh, swinging. So it's 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 loaded uh, shoulder swings for rotation, and and it has totally transformed uh, my strength in terms of overhead press and even bench press uh, as well. So I, I highly recommend it all the time I'm recommending this. I don't know if you would count this as an accessory lift because it's kind of the same thing, but I, the two movements that I think uh, I noticed made a big difference. And to, like, to Sal's point, I've been lifting for a long time. So anytime we get any sort of incremental gains in like the big lifts from doing something Uh, that's a big deal, right? And for me, there was two uh, movements that I wasn't doing, let's say 10 years ago that I started to do uh, more recently and saw a huge gain in my overhead press. One of those being the Z press, which you've heard me probably tout a a million times on the show, uh, which is why I tout it all the time, because it it made such a big difference. I think that actually speaks to kind of Sal's point, uh, because in the Z press, you, ha- you lock out at the top and you stabilize. And so when I do the Z press, I, I, I exaggerate how long I stabilize before I come back down. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I like about that is it it gets me to where I'm in a good locked out position. It teaches me great upper body mechanics because you can't cheat it. If you cheat it at all, uh, you're going to fall over to the side. And then I get kind of that uh, isometric hold at the top, which are the benefits that Sal's talking about he gets. So the Z press was one of those movements. And then the other one that I never used to do until actually I started hanging out with Justin is I never did like a, a push press, mm. uh, which allowed me to increase the weight uh, because I got to use a little bit of body English to get the weight up over my head. Mm-hmm. Uh, I came from like a um, you know bodybuilder type of a background or way of training, you would say, which is very you know tension based and slow tempo and shortening the range of motion up and you know sit- seated uh, overhead press and that like that was like the the go to way to build your shoulders. And uh, I really didn't get into like push presses until Justin, but what the push press allowed me to do because I was able to use some legs Mm -hmm. and body English into the movement, it it allowed me to load the bar a good 25, yeah, yeah, 25 to 50 more pounds than I was ever able to strict shoulder press on there. And just getting used to moving that much weight over my head and then stabilizing at the top uh, really not only develop my shoulders, Mm -hmm. but increase my shoulder press strength. Yeah. Years ago, um, as a kid, one exercise that had a huge character over to my barbell overhead press was the Arnold press, um, which, which I learned from watching, right. you know, uh, from reading, you know, magazines with Arnold Schwarzenegger in them. And I think one of the main reasons why it helped was because it really exaggerated the range of motion. Mm-hmm. Because I was rotating my hand and bringing the dumbbell down in front of my body, 
Now I'm pressing from a much lower position and getting a fuller range of motion. Now, what's even better than an Arnold press, in my opinion, is a kettlebell mm -hmm. overhead press because it's very similar. Yeah, because you can keep it like relatively close to the body the entire way through because of the way it's loaded. And it, it, it promotes that nice natural spiral line that you can press your way through. So you get that rotation in your wrist, in your elbow, in your uh, shoulder all simultaneously. And so it's like your, your body responds to that to, to, to build a nice stable joint there. All right, next question is from Braden Schutz. What are some good strength or mobility moves for the rotator cuff? Man, back in the day, this this was uh, when I first learned about strengthening the, the muscles of the... Well, so first off, let's go into the rotator cuff. Yeah, what it's responsible for. So the cuff itself is a part of the, of the shoulder blade where certain stabilizer muscles attach to um, that affect the shoulder. So you have these what are called big prime mover muscles. So like you're pressing overhead or you're bench pressing. You're using these big, you know, the big muscles of the shoulders, the, the front part of the deltoid, the side, the rear part, you know, the, the muscles that make up the deltoid. Mm -hmm. But there's deeper muscles that control your arm's twist, the rotating that happens. So like let's say I throw a baseball um, and, I and I throw a baseball real hard, the muscles that stabilize the shoulder are really what helps slow my arm down. Or if I throw a punch yeah. or a Frisbee. It keeps These your bone in track too, so it, it keeps everything in, in the right spot. Right, and so what the reason why there's so many issues with the, the rotator cuff or the muscles that stabilize the shoulder is because we tend to work the big muscles, we work the big movements, and we don't strengthen the support system so much. So then when you go and do an explosive movement or you push really heavy weight, these stabilizer muscles can't keep up with these big muscles. Now, I remember when this first happened to me. I was uh, in my teens. I was in my late teens, maybe 17, 18 years old. I'd been working out now for a while, and I was starting to get pretty strong. My bench press was getting up there. Overhead press was getting up there. I could do heavy, heavy rows. And I remember that it, I had this string of kind of shoulder pain where I was – my bench press would, would, would go up a little bit, and then my shoulder would kind of tweak a little bit, and it would go back down. I couldn't figure out – what was going on. And, you know, this is back in the in the late 90s. I used to read bodybuilding magazines. Well, in the back of one of the bodybuilding magazines, there was this device that worked on the rotator cuff. And I think it was called a shoulder horn or something like that. Couldn't remember. I can't remember what it was called, but it held your arms up. So you put it around your neck and it went around your arms and it held your arms up kind of in this like T position. And then what you did is you held dumbbells and, and you, you rotated back. Flip them back. Yeah. And it was the first time had ever been exposed to mm -hmm. a, you know, an a external rotating uh, type movement. So I, I, of course, being a frugal kid, I read that and I said, oh, I can do that without that thing. And I went up to a bench, put my elbow up on the bench, and I started doing this external rotation uh, with a really light dumbbell. Couldn't believe how much stronger my bench press got mm -hmm. almost immediately. Mm -hmm. Like I did that the following week, my bench press that was stuck forever at whatever weight went up five or 10 pounds. And I was like, holy cow, this is a really big deal. And since that day, I've incorporated external rotation uh, in, in my, uh, my shoulder workouts or in many of my shoulder workouts. Now, uh, I'll recommend one that I think is generally easy for most people to do because some of them I think are more difficult. It's a targeted movement for uh, part of the uh, stabilizer muscles that I think a lot of people tend to have issues with. And those are the ones that externally rotate uh, the, the, the humerus. So I'll kind of try and break it down here on the podcast. So what you do is you stand with your arm at your side, elbow bent, have a resistance band attached to something, and then just rotate while keeping your elbow bent and stuck to your side, just rotate your hand out mm -hmm. and bring it back in. That's it. Very basic movement very direct movement on strengthening some of the muscles that I think a lot of people tend to have uh, issues with. Yeah, I like face pulls too, like uh, in terms of like emulating a little bit of what you're talking about uh, with the cables. And I, I use that a lot as a primer, uh, getting into overhead pressing uh, for that specific reason. Uh, it's really prime, you know, that that external rotation. Uh, and uh, again, this is, this is where... Um, like I don't really know any other movement that nails all the different functions and the rotation of the shoulder better than a heart swing. And I've I've promoted this uh, you know ad nauseum on my Instagram because I want people to realize that there's ways to actually exercise uh, you know these these muscles. It, the, it, 
and, and you do like, those are some very common ones you get from like the physical therapist. Like yeah. if, if you're injured, you, you have like a rubber band and, and you're going to do some external rotation with it and some abduction and things like that. However, like taking it through all those different uh, ranges of motion, uh, uh, you know, and then starting to slowly load it. So loading it to something that's like one to two pounds, uh, but then taking it in. So you, you basically start in sort of a racked position. So my hands like really close to my chest and then I'm throwing my arm across my body getting that rotation to come into extension and then all the way up and then kind of behind my back, behind my neck, and then dropping my shoulder down. And it just kind of like seamlessly flows through like all those different points of rotation, which is a great exercise. I'm I'm going to piggyback off of you, Justin, because I think nothing is better than the Indian clubs and the mace bells for this stuff. I think that um, to what Sal was talking about and the point that you just made – uh, the only because that that was what I used to do for rotator cuff stuff is very staple, um, you know, standing. It's with the rehabby. Cable. Yeah, very. Yeah. And not only yeah. is it, re, it's also uh, in a in the same plane, and the shoulder is one of the most complex joints in the entire body. It's multifaceted, right? It moves in all these different planes. It's very dynamic, mm -hmm. and the reality of it is, rarely ever will you ever move your arm or shoulder in this exact same plane whenever you do normal things you're going to move in multiple so i like to strengthen and and work on the rotator cuff in something that's more dynamic like indian clubs or mace belt i think uh again this was something that you justin really introduced me to and has now become a staple in my routine before that i was like sal i was the kid who found the rotator cuff exercises. I also mm -hmm. noticed what a big difference it made on my my bench press. Not only how much stronger I got and support I felt, um, but I just didn't hurt as much. Like I used mm -hmm. to always like my shoulders would kind of bother me all the time uh, when I would do uh, heavy chest. And when I began to start to uh, start workouts with rotator cuff exercises, I noticed that it would alleviate that. So that was like the big connection for me first with that. And then when I got introduced to the Indian clubs and mace belt with Justin, uh, what I found was, oh, this is really cool. I can, once I got good at those movements, I could just start every kind of upper body. If I was ever doing chest or shoulders, I always, still to this day, start uh, my routine with just a quick little Indian club and mace bell warm up. And I've, I've over time gotten stronger and stronger. So I can, for me, I, and I'll never forget the first time swinging that mace bell, it was awkward and hard and five pounds of it was weird. And the Indian clubs, the super light ones were difficult and challenging. Once I trained that and got really good, now I just got to grab, I can go grab the 30 pound mace bell right now cold and start swinging around. No problem. Or the, the, the heavier, um, Indian clubs we have, I can get right into it because I've done a good job of keeping that up and my shoulders have never felt so good. And it doesn't take a lot of work and effort if I just include it into my routine. And it's important because I mean, if if you're like me and you, you know, you're you're trying to throw the ball with your kids, you know, or or whatever it is, like the like you'd be very surprised if you haven't done it for like years or decades and then you all of a sudden start throwing a ball again, like what kind of aches and pains and things are gonna, you know, come out of that. And so to keep that in your routine is is paramount to then, you know, keep you functional and keep you active in your in your everyday life. Totally. And uh, you know, I'll give you one that you can go on our YouTube channel uh, and look up. And we have a good video on handcuffs uh, with rotation. Oh, that's a great yeah, one. Great shoulder movement. Um, it works the the shoulder through a pretty full range of motion. And, uh, you know, unless you're injured, um, it's a great uh, movement that you can do, priming movement that will maintain uh, good health of the shoulders. And, we again, we have a really good video on our YouTube channel, Mind Pump TV. Next question is from Nathaniel L. Watson. How long do you stick with exercises before switching to new ones? Hmm. Boy, I guess it, this depends on the exercise, yeah, I would say. I um, certain vague, but certain we'll movements that are in consistent, regular rotation in my routine include a deadlift, a squat, a split stance squat of some, some type, like a, like a lunge. Um, overhead presses are always in there. Barbell rows are almost uh, always in there. So those movements are ones that I think you can always do. You probably should always do. They're very complex. They use a lot of muscles. You're constantly getting better at them. It's, it's easy to find weaknesses in each of them, so there's ways to improve. Other mu exercises that I do that I throw in and out tend to be a lot of the 
isolation movements. Yeah, I was uh, just going to say cable machine exercises. Yeah, those, those I'll mix and match. You know, those mm. ones I don't necessarily stick to too long, um, you know, for any length of period of time. Those big compound movements, though, those are ones that they're always in rotation. So it's like I never, I almost never really take them out unless I feel like I overdid something. Mm. Like That's I, the backbone of your workout. Yeah, like I took deadlifts out for, um, for about four weeks because uh, I, in, in squats, because I needed to work on my unilateral strength. Um, but then I threw them back in and, you know, they're, they're, they're consistent again. Um, but the isolation stuff, I, I, I mix those up quite a bit. I, I the say. way I look at, I look at it is like ever all machine and cable exercises. I never do the same ones longer than two or three weeks straight. Right. So if I, if I've, I'm on my favorite preacher curl machine or my favorite, you know, shoulder press machine or check chest fly on the, I won't ever do that exercise if it's machine or cables, uh, longer than probably two or three weeks in my routine right. before I, I I move it out or s exchange it with a different movement. But a lot of your your dumbbell and uh, barbell compound lifts, you know, and I'm trying to like rack my brain right now of like something like just what would I, I would move out of my routine. Stay in my routine. Uh, just variations happen, right? So like, uh, you know, let's say you know a bench press, barbell bench press. Well, you know, if I've been doing flat barbell bench press for three weeks, then I move to incline barbell bench press. Or, you know, if I've been doing, I did that, then incline, then maybe. I, but the after, so the first uh, three weeks, I'm doing flat barbell bench press, and the next three weeks, I'm doing incline barbell bench press. And the next three weeks of that, I'm doing, I go back to flat, but now I do dumbbells. Mm -hmm. You know, dumbbells of a flat bench press, and then I kind of rotate through like that. So there's staple moves that. I think belong uh, in most everybody's routine. I mean, there's always exceptions to the rule on somebody that probably should be focused more on corrective exercise um, or they have uh, very specific goals, like performance goals. Like the, I guess that's different. But for the average person who's just trying to be healthy, trying to be strong, trying to build muscle, trying to lose body fat, uh, the big compound lifts should always be a, a foundation in your routines and maybe just variations because we can squat like, T 10 different ways. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. you could zercher, you could oh, front yeah. squat, you could back close squat, you could do low bar, you could do high bar, you could do narrow stance, you could do wide stance, and that's all a squat. It's all a barbell squat. But it's done, you know, seven different ways and variations that will create some sort of novelty for the body mm -hmm. and create new stimulus in a sense for it. So, but it's such a good move that you don't want to eliminate. I think the the thing you have to communicate to most people that is so important is those lifts are so valuable that you got to just be careful. First of all, getting people to all do them is the, is the first step as a trainer. We're always trying to communicate that. And then w what you don't want to do is, you know, eliminate those things for some cool new machine that hits your gym. Right. Because it's cool and it's new. Yeah. And I think as I've gotten older, like I've definitely reduced uh, the amount of novelty uh, substantially. Like I used to like want to try all the new uh, suspension trainers out there. I want to try that whatever new machine was going to provide like a new stimulus for me. But for the most part, like all I am conscious of now is like, I need to switch over from, you know, back loaded barbell squats to front loaded, you know, and, like, right. when do I do that appropriately? Like when have I, you know, has it been a couple months since I've really hit my front squats and really worked on that? Uh, and then the other thing that I'm always conscious of is, you know, how long I've been uh, bilaterally training and, and not including, you know, the other planes and, and, and rotating enough or moving side to side. Uh, and, and, and so what provides a good way to do that is, is, you know, a lot of unilateral training or, you know, focusing on that for a few weeks. And so I use that more as an interrupter, uh, when I really start to kind of feel the, the aches and pains, the tightness start to creep up on me a bunch. That's usually an indicator for me that I'm going to now kind of switch over into more unilateral training. Next question is from Amber Bonda 915. Should Jim still be charging trainers rent to train clients while the gym is mandated closed. Dude, we had a, did we, was this a question or were we just talking about it on our qual the other day with uh, the 24 hour fitness thing? That yeah, was, was that was a question. Okay. So did yeah. you guys get, did you guys get DMs from people after that? No. Oh, okay. I got a bunch after oh, that. Yeah. What happened? <laughs> yeah and uh, people that work there it. still. Right. And oh. they actually sent me the, the email and the link. So 24 hour fitness just like yesterday, the day before. So, so obviously it's new. So it's probably why you guys didn't get a bunch. It just happened like two days ago. <clears throat> uh, 24 hour fitness did send an email finally in response to the, them not letting go of people's memberships. Cause that's what, that was what we talked about, right? Yeah, Somebody yeah. brought up that 24 hour fitness was 
they they weren't answering their phones. They weren't uh, allowing people to cancel memberships. Well, eventually they got a message that was like that said something like they're going to extend their yeah. membership. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly what th that was originally. Which is still a cop out. Yeah, that's stupid, right? Yeah. What does that mean? So, uh, and who knows how long this is going to last? And like, so you just gonna keep billing me for if this mm -hmm. is three or six months down the road and I haven't used a gym? That's ridiculous, right? So. Uh, they did uh, obviously respond. I'm sure they got just totally lambasted for doing this. And now they're uh, allowing you to uh, cancel your membership online, which they didn't do before. You'd have to call and do this. Oh. So, right. So that was their response. So I go in my uh, email that it, my membership is attached to. I find this email. There's a direct link. Goes. I go to the link. Okay. Enter your membership uh, number, which is also your phone or your phone number. Same mm -hmm. thing. And then your birth date. So unless I don't know my own phone number and my birth date, I don't know, uh, it kicks me to an air page. It's like, oh, it, and says that you know, either my birth date or my my membership number is incorrect. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? So if, if you don't, well, of course you're going to know those things. Of course. Yeah, 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 of okay. course. And it's, you know, when you go to 24, you punch in the phone number. It's yeah, my yeah. phone number. Uh -huh. right, right, it's the right, same right. one I've had since I was freaking 17. Right, right. So I know that for sure. And I'm pretty confident my birth date's tattooed <laughs> on me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like. Yeah. And it uh, doesn't match up, you know. So it said that for you. Yeah, yeah. I put an error in, and so I can't cancel online. So I got to now it go. Said it didn't match up for you. <laughs> yes. Weird. That's what, I, that's what I said. <laughs> that's really I, weird. I thought that was really interesting. Mm -hmm. That like, okay, this is funny. Like they did a response, but then I go to cancel, and you know it looked like they were going to make it easy, but no. And now I got it. And then it says if you're getting an error page. Please go here, email this person, and I'm like, oh, God. Oh, Presenting geez. the illusion of making it easy yeah. for you. Yeah. So well, anyways, I know that has nothing to do with this question, really, um, but it, uh, that was on my mind when this came up. Well, with, with this question here, I have mixed feelings uh, over it. So um, I know how I would handle this. Yeah, I've owned, you know, I owned a personal training studio with trainers who all paid me rent. Um, one thing you have to understand is that the owner of the gym also has to pay bills and rent as well. So he may, he or she may have closed the gym, but he or she still has to pay rent to the, you know, to the complex or whatever. They still have to pay their lease. So their bills aren't being stopped. So that's probably why they're still charging you as a trainer, even though you're not training clients. Now it, it all feels unfair, but here's the deal. Um, if, if everybody stopped paying, then, then when it was reopened, then you might not have a job at all. Now, here's how I would handle it. I would call every single one of my trainers and have that conversation. And I would tell them, and I'd be very transparent. I would say, look, here's what's going on. Here's what the bills look like. Um, I can't afford to run this with everybody paying zero. I know normally you pay X amount of dollars, uh, just to keep the just to be able to have the doors remain open when it's time to go back, mm -hmm. I need at least this much. So instead of paying me your normal X amount of dollars, here's what I'm going to charge you guys, and this is just what I need to keep the doors open. That's the kind of conversation that I would have because I think that goes a long way. Um, now here's the deal: if you can't pay it, you can't pay it. You know, um, he 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 or she can't force you either. You may be in contract. But good luck coming after you, uh, you know, yeah. after a time like this. But what? Well, that's a tough situation. No, that is. You know, it'd be interesting to. Uh, I'll have to reach out to our friend Scott over at Red Dot because he. This was obviously this is right in his wheelhouse, and he's dealing with this right now. Right, he had to shut down uh, his facility. But I also know they're doing a lot of things in response to this. So uh, I agree with you, Sal. And how how I how I would feel about it as a trainer, uh, I guess how upset I would or would not be would be on uh, how much the owner is also helping me come up with ways to continue to make totally, revenue, totally. right? Yeah. Like I believe over at Red Dot, I believe that they're still creating virtual classes and like, Smart. you know, so they're, they're, they're creating things that is allowing these coaches to still interact with the community to keep things going. So if they're playing a big role in in allowing you either one to still use a facility for access like that, or the or you have connection to their continue their their community that they have created, um, so I, if they're doing things like that that are still helping you some way, I do see a lot of value in supporting them and helping them. And maybe that's at a reduced rate, or maybe it's a full rate. I don't know. It really would depend on how much I'm being impacted by it. But if I can pivot as a trainer start to go virtual and they're assisting me, my ability to do that. Uh, and, and it pretty much guarantees that if I keep paying that, that they'll still be able to have their doors open in 60 or 90 days. 
um, I think I feel better about writing that that check every single month. Yeah, it's a tough situation because sometimes I think we we just think of fairness. So we think, well, it's not fair that I'm having to pay this bill, um, even though I'm not right. But who's at the biggest risk? Yeah, is, to is another thing. Well, I mean, everybody. Yeah. You know, it, it goes up the chain. Like, okay, you pay him or her rent; they have to pay their rent. Now the complex has to pay their mortgage, uh, you know, whatever, and their taxes. Um, and so it just it goes up the chain. So it's it's not as easy as being like, oh, hey, everybody, you know. Don't pay. Don't worry about it. Right. Because um, you still want to have a place to come back to, yeah. too. So, yeah, like you said earlier, it's it's really it's a transparent conversation of like, you know, who's like, are you willing to help? Uh, you know, like, what can I do to then, you know, keep your business going while we're nobody's allowed in here? That's like, right. So now, that needs to be a conversation. And in my opinion, that conversation needs to be initiated by the owner uh, of absolutely. the gym. Now, if the owner of the gym isn't having this conversation with you, um, then the next best person is you. You call them up and say, look, here's the deal. I'm not training any clients, obviously, right now. It's going to – I don't think I can afford to pay the full amount every single month while you're closed. Can we work something out? Because I don't want to leave. When it's time to reopen, I want to be able to come back. I'm not trying to leave. I just can't afford to pay because I'm not collecting any money from my clients. Right. Now it's your now your responsibility is to initiate that conversation. Although I think the the, the best person would have been Well, you know, and this too, like, you know, maybe it's something they can work out where later when they're more thriving and profitable, you know, like a couple months later, like that that could come kind of back to kind of back pay it or whatever. You could work something interesting out. Look, I had people in my uh, gym or my studio that would paying me consistently rent for you know ten plus years. All right, consistently. Now that's a lot. I mean, that the rent, the retention on. We talk all the time about client retention. The trainer retention rate for a private studio is terrible. It's very right. bad. Um, it's it's hard to find trainers who can build their business, maintain building their own business in a studio. You you worked in studios, Justin. Yep. You know, like, oh, it's, you were probably one of the only ones that were there. I was the, one of the only consistent <clears throat> ones that, that remained, you know. Like, there was people coming in and out all the time. It's very hard. So I, I would have trainers and massage therapists that were in my studio that would, every you know, not often, but they'd come to me, and I because I had this open, you know, conversation and relationship with them, they'd come to me and say, hey, look, here's what's happening. It's going to be kind of rough this month. What do you think you can do? And I would work things out with them. And what that ended up giving me was incredible loyalty. They mm -hmm. didn't want to go to any other studio yep. because I had them feel that way. So I think this is a conversation uh, that needs to be had. And if, if the owner's not calling you and talking to you about it, um, you know, okay, that kind of sucks. But the next best thing, you have that conversation and then take it from there. And with that, go to mindpumpfree.com, download all of our guides, resources, and books. They cost Nothing. They're all totally free. They're all free. Good stuff. Good information. You can also find the three Very of good. us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.